In this lesson, we want to talk about exponents and the order of operations. At this point, you should be fairly comfortable working with exponents and simplifying any type of numerical or algebraic expression that you come across. It's really important that we take a moment and review this type of material so that you don't get stuck on this later on in the course when we're working with more advanced topics. So we're gonna start out today by just talking about what is an exponent and why are exponents used in the study of mathematics? So most of us start learning about exponents when we're in pre-algebra. Some of us wait until algebra to learn about exponents and others will be exposed to exponents in grammar school. No matter what your experience is with exponents, you start out by learning about exponents that are whole number exponents larger than the number one. So in other words, you'd start with exponents of two, then three, then four, you know, so on and so forth. So these type of exponents are used to write a repeated multiplication of the same number in a more compact form. So let me give you an example. If we had something like nine times nine, times nine times nine, times nine times nine, this takes up a lot of room on my screen. What I can do, I can write this in exponential form or exponential notation. What I would want to figure out here is how many factors of this number nine do I have? So I can count. I have one, two, three, four, five, and then finally six. So I have six factors of nine. So to write this using an exponent, I would say this is equal to the number that's being multiplied by itself, in this case that's nine, this is referred to as the base. This is the larger number, this is the first number you're gonna write. So let me just label this as the base. Again, this is the number that's multiplied by itself, and we have six factors of this nine. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna write an exponent of six. So this is gonna go at the top right of the number, and this tells me, again, how many factors of nine that we have. So this six is my exponent. So when you work with a whole number exponent that's larger than one, it always follows this format. So as another example, let's say I had something like four times 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 four. If I count this up, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight factors, eight factors of four. So that means I can write this as four, right? That's the number that's being multiplied by itself. That's gonna be my base raised to the eighth power, right? Because I have eight factors of four. So four raised to the eighth power. So eight is my exponent. All right, so let's look at a very simple example we're gonna write each repeated multiplication in exponent form. We're starting out with two times two times two times two. So we have four factors of two. So this means we would write this as two raised to the fourth power. Again, this two is the base. It's the number that's multiplied by itself. The four is the exponent. It's the number of factors of two that we have. All right, then we have five times five times five. We have three factors of the number five. So we'll have five to the third power, otherwise known as five cubed, right? If you have something that is raised to the second power, you say it's squared. Something raised to the third power, you say it's cubed. All right, as another example, we're gonna evaluate each, which means we're gonna find the value for, and then we're gonna identify the base and the exponent. So we have seven to the second power. Again, if something raised to the second power, we say it's squared. So we'd say seven squared. So to evaluate this, I would write it as a repeated multiplication. This two tells me I have two factors of the number seven. So seven times seven, and now I can just multiply. Seven times seven is 49. This guy also wants me to identify the base and the exponent. So the base is seven. And let me make that a little better. And the exponent is two. As another example, we have four to the fifth power. So to evaluate this, we would have four times four times four times four times four, right? Five factors of the base four. So again, this is the base, this is the exponent. 
And we can do this without a calculator, although this is kind of a big number. 4 times 4 is 16. 16 times 4 is 64. 64 times 4 is 256. And then 256 times 4 is 1,024. And kind of an easy way to do that in your head. If you think about 250 times 4, that's easy. It's 1,000. And then you can take the 6 part, multiply that by 4, and that would give you the 24. So you can just add those two numbers together and you get 1,024. All right, now let's talk about exponents with a negative base. So this is not negative exponents. Please don't be confused here. We're talking about exponents that have a negative base. So when working with a number in exponential form where we have a negative base, we have to be extra careful. The negative is not part of the base unless it is wrapped inside of a set of parentheses. So let me show you the difference between these two. If we have negative 3 inside of parentheses squared, this is equal to negative 3 multiplied by negative 3, which is positive 9. If we have negative 3 squared like this, by rule, we are to treat this as the negative, negative 1 multiplied by 3 squared. The base here is 3. It is not negative 3. This is a very common source of confusion. So by the rules of the order of operations, we know we need to apply the exponent before we multiply. So this would be negative 1 times 9, which is negative 9. So that's why you get two different answers here. And if you don't believe me, punch up negative 3 and then squared on your calculator, it will give you negative 9 as a result. Then take negative 3 and wrap it in parentheses and square that on your calculator, and you will get positive 9 as a result. Now, something we want to talk about before we kind of move further, if we think about exponents with a negative base, it's only going to have an impact if the exponent is even. Okay, so if I saw something like, I don't know, let's say negative 4, and this is cubed, or I had negative 4 like this cubed, I'm going to end up with the same answer, right? Although it's evaluated different, this is negative 1 times 4 cubed, which is negative 1 times 4 cubed is going to be 4 times 4, which is 16 times 4, which is 64. So negative 1 times 64, which is negative 64. The process won't be the same here, but I'll get the same result. So this is negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4, because again, the parentheses surround the negative and the 4. So this becomes what? Negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16. Positive 16 times negative 4 is negative 64. Although, again, we had different methods here, we get the same answer. And the reason for that is because we have an odd exponent in this case. An odd number of negative factors will always give you a negative result. So it doesn't matter in the case where we have an odd exponent. With an even exponent, an even number of negative factors will give you a positive result, so it will definitely change the answer whether you have parentheses around the base or not when you have a negative number involved. All right, let's look at a quick example here. So we want to evaluate each and then identify the base and the exponent. So we have negative 5, where negative 5 is wrapped inside of parentheses, and this is cubed. So I'm just going to identify the base as negative 5. So the base is negative 5. The exponent is 3. To evaluate this, I would have negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5. And that would give me negative 5 times negative 5 is 25. 25 times negative 5 is negative 125. And again, it didn't matter that I had parentheses around the base here. We have an odd number for our exponent, right? 3 is an odd number. So we ended up with an odd number of negative factors, right? You have 1, 2, 3 negatives there. So you're going to end up with a negative product, right? So you get negative 125. All right, what about negative 8 squared with no parentheses around the base? So here we're going to say that our base is 8. It is not negative 8, it is 8. Because really I could write this as negative 1 times 8 squared. So the base is 8, and the exponent, the exponent is 2. All right, so we have negative 1 times 8 squared, which is basically negative 1 times 64. 
right? 8 times 8 is 64. So this is just equal to negative 64. Again, if I had set this up as inside of parentheses negative 8 squared, well then the negative and the 8 are both squared. So this is negative 8 times negative 8, which is 64. So please don't make this mistake when you're evaluating expressions or if you're working on something like that, make sure you understand the difference between when you have parentheses around a negative and when you don't, because it can definitely change your answer. All right, so let's talk about the order of operations. Most of us will remember this as PEMDAS, PEMDAS, or please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, right? So it stands for parentheses, exponents, multiplication and division, addition and subtraction. So this is basically the method that you're gonna use whenever you evaluate any type of numerical expression or algebraic expression, and you have multiple operations involved, right? So you need to know the order to perform the operations in so that you get the correct answer. So the first one here isn't really a step, it's just a general guideline. A lot of people make this mistake. You need to work separately above and below any fraction bar. So that's very important, you wanna separate the two. So work the numerator completely, work the denominator completely. So make sure those are completely simplified and then you can perform the main division. All right, so our first real step here is to work inside of any grouping symbols. So this is where the P comes in PEMDAS, right? Parentheses. But really it doesn't have to be parentheses, it can be brackets, it can be absolute value bars, it can be any type of grouping symbols that are present. These take the absolute priority over everything. And if you have multiple grouping symbols, you basically start at the innermost set and work outward. It's kind of like when you get inside of a set of parentheses, you have to reapply the order of operations. The next thing we want to do, the E in PEMDAS stands for exponents, but this means we will simplify powers and roots. So you could also have a square root, a cube root, something like that. So these have kind of equal priority levels, and we're going to evaluate these working from left to right. So if I had a power on the left, I would do that one first versus something that I saw later on on the right. Now, the next thing, the M and the D in PEMDAS, and this is a source of confusion, stands for perform all the multiplication and division. Because M comes before D in PEMDAS, students always assume that multiplication is more important than division. It's not. They're the same priority level. We work these left to right. So I have working left to right. So if you had something like 3 times 5, divided by, let's say five, you would make sure to multiply first before you divide, because in this particular case, the multiplication occurs to the left of the division. But if I had something like 20 divided by four times three, I would divide before I multiply because the division is to the left of the multiplication. All right, the last step in our order of operations, it's the A and the S in PEMDAS. It's perform all addition and subtraction. Again, these have the same priority level. It's the same thing as we just saw with multiplication division. It's working left to right. So again, don't assume because the A comes before the S that addition is more important. It's worked left to right. All right, let's take a look at an example. So we have a fraction here. So the first thing I would note before I do anything is that if you didn't write this as a fraction, what you would do is you would put parentheses around the numerator. So three squared minus five times 17 plus 81 divided by nine. So parentheses around that and then divided by, put this in parentheses. So you have the absolute value of negative 10 squared plus 15 and then minus six times the square root of nine. This is separate from this. So I would simplify in here, simplify in here, and then do that division. That's what we need to do when we have a fraction bar involved. So very, very important to understand that. So let me erase this. We don't even need to write it like this. We're just gonna work with it in fractional form. But if you didn't want to, that's how you would set it up. All right, so the first thing, I'm just gonna work in my numerator. I'm gonna simplify that completely, and then I'll look at the denominator. So what do I have? I have an exponent, I have subtraction, multiplication, addition, and division. So no parentheses or grouping symbols in the numerator. So I'm gonna start with my highest priority, which is to apply the exponent. So three squared is nine. So I'm just gonna replace three squared with nine, and then I'll copy. So minus five times 17 
plus 81 divided by 9 over, we have the absolute value of negative 10 squared plus 15 and then minus 6 times the square root of 9. Okay, so the next thing, if we look, we have subtraction, multiplication, addition, and division. Multiplication is the highest priority here. So we want to work on 5 times 17 next. So what is 5 times 17? Well, 5 times 10 is 50, 5 times 7 is 35. If you add those two together, 50 plus 35 is 85. So I would have 85, so 9 minus 85, and then plus 81 divided by 9. Again, this is over. We have the absolute value of negative 10 squared plus 15, and then minus 6 times the square root of 9. Okay, so now we have subtraction, addition, and division. Division is the highest priority, so we're going to work on 81 divided by 9. 81 divided by 9 is 9. And just to save kind of some space here, let's just erase this and put a 9. And now we have subtraction and addition. Subtraction occurs to the left of addition, so it's a higher priority. So 9 minus 85 is going to give me negative 76. So let's erase this and put negative 76. And then negative 76 plus 9 would give me negative 67. So negative 67. Okay, so the numerator is simplified. I don't need to worry about it anymore. I can just work in my denominator. So in the denominator, we do have grouping symbols. We have the absolute value operation. So we start inside of there first. So once we get inside of there, we want to reapply the order of operations. We have negative 10 squared plus 15. Now, this negative here is not inside of a set of parentheses. So basically, I have negative 1 times 10 squared or negative 1 times 100. So let's put this as equal to negative 67 over the absolute value of this right here will be negative 100 and then plus 15. And then we have minus 6 times the square root of 9. Kind of finishing this up, negative 100 plus 15 is negative 85. And in other words, if we had negative 85 inside of absolute value bars, we take the absolute value, we get 85. So we would have negative 67 over 85 minus 6 times the square root of 9. Okay, let me scroll down, get a little room going. So now in my denominator, I have subtraction, I have multiplication, 6 times the square root of 9, and I have a root, right? I have the square root of 9. So square root of 9 will have the highest priority. Square root of 9 is 3. So we can really write this as 6 times 3 here. So now we have subtraction and multiplication. Multiplication is a higher priority. 6 times 3 here would be 18. So we'll end up with 85 minus 18, which is 67. So this will end up giving me negative 67 over 67, or in other words, negative 67 divided by 67, which we know is negative 1. Right? This would cancel with this and just leave me with negative 1. 